Hi everyone, today I wanted to talk a little bit about what I think is the best strategy to become a really good computer scientist. Chronos Matrix, focus on what matters most. Visually keep your goals in check and create new goals so you can stay on schedule. Watch your daily, weekly, and monthly results to stay focused. Free time optimization app. And we're back. So the connection I'm gonna be making here from uh, OMSCS into better strategies of becoming a computer scientist. Now, you don't really have to do this within OMSCS. You can completely do this on your own. But again, for me, um, being into this program has been very motivational. It's kept me on track. And since they have a framework, unless you already have a structure that you want to follow, like, you know, some people want to be studying computer vision, other people want to be doing natural language processing, they already have a very certain um, type of field that they want. So they have already the books that they want to study. They already know what area that they're trying to focus on. Uh, I tell people that are, already have, um, you know, if you already know where you want to go, I mean, you don't need to be told by other group, uh, another group of people, you know, where to go, what to do, right? So if you're, if you're already that structured in what you're gonna, uh, what you're gonna be studying, um, I say just, you know, stay on that path, whatever is working. But when I got into computer science, not only did I wanna know the theory, I wasn't really sure which area I was um, actually interested in, in getting into. So now I'm much more uh, um, headed towards uh, machine learning for trade, which is a class that we're definitely going to be talking about in in the program. But the um, you know in stocks investing now, obviously with the whole crypto scene, there are certain areas that it's like I'm seeing the combination of programming, mathematics, um, you know, machine learning, AI, statistics. It's I'm I'm seeing myself interested in that area. But when I first got into the program, I wasn't really sure. Right? It's like I just wanted to be a great software developer in general work on games and work on different types of uh, applications. Um, and I wanted to do that the best way possible. So before getting into the program, I obviously had to put in several years getting you know, my computer science, my mathematics classes. I kind of had to be ready for what uh, Georgia Tech was, uh, was gonna be about. And um, what I noticed is when you're going to school and you have an instructor there that's gonna help you out, when you have other teammates that are helping you out, you start depending on them a little bit too much. Now, in the very beginning, I highly recommend this. If you're completely clueless as to what you're doing, you know, being held, uh, um, you know, being held by the hand, um, so to speak, you know, somebody else helping you out with your with your code, I think is uh, highly recommendable. But in uh, in other cases, and this is kind of where I was getting at after uh, uh, after the first year, you start relying too much on other people to help you out. And especially when you know somebody who's already been putting in, you know, already put in the hours, already put in the years in your particular field, it just gets more comfortable, right? It, so you're always getting this, you know, I, I need to ask somebody else, I need somebody else's help to get this, uh, this type of code done, to get it to work uh, mentality. So long term wise, that, that does become a problem because, I mean, if you're working on a project that has very clear, um, very clear issues that somebody else has already gone through and they can help you out. Well, that would be great. But then you're going to be working on some projects where it's like you, there is no manual. There, you're setting yourself up for, for failure because you're so used to asking somebody else. If they haven't gone through that particular issue or they're just not around, you're just always going to be stumped. So this is one of the reasons why the isolation and the loneliness that OMSCS provides uh, because you're just completely on your own, especially if you're like me, just kind of floating around the world. It's um, I actually think in the long in the long run, it's extremely helpful because you have to become self-reliant. Now, like anything else, if you can get all of it right, if you can get some of your education um, uh, being helped by others, um, and some of that in this kind of isolated environment, that's why what I did, I, I, I highly recommend that you know work on your. Your, um, your undergraduate have that community kind of a help, but then for the master's degree, it's when you're really trying to, you know, really push yourself to learn um, all these different types of techniques on your own, it, you start hardwiring yourself into 
first off, you're learning faster, I guess, because you kind of have to. Otherwise, you can't move forward with if you're doing a project, if you're doing a homework assignment. Um, and the other thing that it's like I find it just really, really helpful is you start believing in yourself as a programmer. And this is literally why I went back to um, um, and back to school to begin with, right? Because I had a basic understanding of programming, but I really wasn't sure what I was doing. Um, even though I was building automated scripts, I was doing um, different websites, um, doing all sorts of tricks with, uh, with uh, MySQL databases. I wasn't really understanding what I was doing, so it was pretty much just tweaking other people's code. And uh, even after a couple of years of working on my, uh, on my other classes for computer science, right? Especially one I recommend to everybody, discrete structures. I'll probably make a couple of videos on that one because that, that one is extreme. <laughs> Data structures and discrete uh, structures. Those are the two most helpful classes that you can, uh, courses that you can take anywhere, really. And uh, you know, the more you take it, yeah, uh, the better, right? So it's like you can, the more books on those two subjects, uh, definitely the, the more helpful. But, um, but I kept getting into these moments where it's like, I wasn't sure, am I really doing this right? Am I really progressing? Do I really know what I'm doing? And nothing has helped more than working on projects where there was no solutions online. I was trying to develop systems or fix problems that I hadn't seen before and being able to fix them myself. No help, no other programmer, no other team. I was just isolated on my own for hours and hours. Now, I enjoy doing this kind of work, which is why I keep keep stressing, you need to enjoy doing this because you're gonna be spending lots of hours just debugging and just looking at the same lines of code. You have to enjoy the process. But since I did, I could move forward on my own and finally get to that point where I knew what I was doing and I didn't have to have somebody else helping me out. I could figure it out on my own. Not only is the process of working on other projects, collaborating with others in, a in some type of a team, and um, specifically working on your own projects, that really helps because you're working on problems usually that say, you're just not gonna encounter in a school-like environment. The, uh, the process of just learning it on your own, working it on your own, reading books on your own and trying to figure things out on your own. I know it's much harder. It's so much easier and more fun, you know, really to do it with others. But um, I think it just kind of depends on, you know, what your particular goals are, right? For me, it's like I wanted to really, really understand what I was doing when it came to programming and be able to do any kind of uh, project um, that I wanted to, to develop. So for me, it's been great. So I, I highly recommend doing both, right? Uh, work with others in a couple projects, work completely isolated and alone uh, on, uh, on others. And even when you get in those moments where you're like, I can't figure this out. I mean, take a walk, take it easy for you know a couple days, just kind of stay away from it for a little bit and then tackle, um, tackle it again. But that confidence that you get from, you're just doing project after project where it's like you built it, you figured out the strategy on your own, you figured out what was the best algorithm for that for that particular script. It's, uh, I mean, for me, it's worth the price of admission, right? Like it's really invaluable. So can you do it outside of OMS? I mean, of course you can do all of this stuff uh, on your own if, if that's what you want to do. But uh, again, if it motivates you, I highly recommend you know going for it as well. Even though at first it might be really, really difficult to code and learn completely on your own. At the end of the day, I think it's totally worth it. So that's my recommendation.